What's up guys? So I had intended this morning to show you kind of a new video because as you might be able to tell, you, this is not my normal setup. I'm not at home. Uh, we are actually in a condo uh, in our town. Some crazy stuff has happened to our house. Anyway, I was planning on shooting this video this morning and showing you guys a beautiful Tennessee morning. You know, I was going to have this nice backdrop with the trees behind me and the sun is shining. Instead, this is what I got for you. It's wet. It's nasty. The weather changed in like five minutes. Eh, welcome to Tennessee. Let's get started. Hey guys, Jeffrey from That Bold Life, your weekly encouragement to help you live a bold life for Jesus. As you can probably tell, this is a little bit different of a video. I'm obviously in a different setting. Uh, some crazy stuff has happened in my life. That's why I haven't been able to upload in the last week or so. Um, and I do apologize for that, but I'm actually here at a condo in my own town uh, shooting this video for you guys. Um, anyway, guys, let me just update you a little bit of what's happened in my life. If you just want to jump straight into the devotion, uh, I'll have the timestamp down below. So a couple weeks ago, we had a plumbing mishap and our floors were completely flooded and we have natural hardwood. So the wood kind of soaked up the water and it began to like rise and to buckle and it just got real ugly. Uh, fortunately, God was there, God protected us. Uh, so we did Farm Bureau who uh, covered all of the water damage. We were able to get a check and we've had a team in there tearing up floors, putting in new floors. A lot of crazy stuff's happened recently, but uh, it seems like we are gonna be taken care of, so it's all good. So long story short, our house is being worked on. So we are actually in a condo here, um, which we've had to stay, I think about two weeks. So uh, we needed something with a full kitchen so we could actually cook for ourselves. Um, but anyway, man, life is good. It's been crazy, but it has certainly been good. Um, so let's jump into our devotion. So today I want to ask the question, is God's love reckless? So there's a huge new song out that I've actually seen a lot of controversy on, but it's called Reckless Love. And I'm not going to lie. I love Reckless Love. It is one of my favorite songs at the moment because every time I hear it, it re-energizes and reinvigorates me. Like it gets me pumped up to know that, you know, whatever I'm going through, because with this damage to my house, I didn't know the insurance was gonna cover it. I didn't know that it would be all paid for. I didn't know if we'd have a team in there to do it. I didn't know if I'd have to be trying to change floors myself, which I'm not a carpenter. But in those times, in these kind of desperate times, these times, where you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's coming your way. You don't know what troubles and what trials and what pain is going to hit. It's in these times that we have to understand that God's love for us is indeed reckless. You see, a lot of people have trouble with this song because they say that God is not reckless. God is calculated. God is perfect. And all those may be true. But actually, the word reckless means this. Without thinking or caring about the consequences of an action. We may think that God did care about the consequence. He knew what would happen with his very actions, but you can't tell me that it wasn't still reckless because God knew the consequences of his actions would be that he would come as Jesus Christ and that he would die on the cross. You see, God so loved us that he was reckless. He took no regard for himself. Instead, he came with a reckless love, that he came with a all surrounding, all encompassing love for his children and that he loved us, he loved you and he loved me so much that he was reckless, that he had a reckless love because he did not take within consideration himself. We see in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus says, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. You see, Jesus knew what the consequences of his actions would be, but he loved you and I so much he was willing to be reckless. And he was willing to not care about the consequences of his actions because he knew his actions would save and redeem, defeat sin and death once and for all for you and me. That love that Jesus has for you and me, it's, it's reckless. It's scandalous. It's beautiful. It's unmerited. It's undeserved. It's unearned. You see, God loved you so much, but not because of anything you could do or anything you earned, any actions you did or any words you spoke, not because anything you could actually do, but because of who you are. Jessica and I were talking last night about how we suddenly understand what it means to have a childlike faith. That when we look at our daughter, 
She looks at us when something scares her, she runs and wraps her arms around our legs. She's sad, or when she's hurt, she runs to us. And she knows that we will be there, that we will provide, that we will care, we will love, we will take care of her. Why does she think that? Does she think that we will take care of her and we will provide for her simply because of all the good things she has done? We will take care of her because she's starting the potty train? Will we take care of her because she didn't pour her cup of juice in the floor? Will we take care of her because she's avoided the rocks that have been awkwardly in the hallway of this condo for some weird reason? No, we take care of her and we love her. And we provide for her, not because of anything she has done, but because of who she is. She is our child. We love her, we provide for her, we will take care of her forever for no other reason than who she is. Nothing she could do, nothing she could earn, nothing she could lose. We love her because she is our child. God's love for us is reckless. He loves you not because of anything you did or could do or could earn or could accomplish. He loves you whether you got first place or the last place because he loves you for who you are not what you've done. That's the reckless love of our Savior. And the air conditioner kicked on. It's cool though, I'm done. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below. Tell me if you like the song Reckless Love, um, or if you don't. Uh, anyway guys, love you, keep living that bold life.